close your eyes and pay attention to your breath. When you breathe in, where do you feel the breathing? When you breathe out, where do you feel it? Focus your attention there and see if you can keep it there. You want to get some control over your mind because your mind is the main factor that shapes your life. And it's not under your control. Whose control is it under? It's usually the, under the control of your moods. You want to make sure that you have some hierarchy inside the mind as to deciding what to do, what not to do. And so the first part of that hierarchy is getting the mind to do what you want it to. Tell it to do something good and make sure that it sticks with it. In the case of the breath, you stay right here. And if the mind wanders off, you just bring it back. Wanders off again, bring it back again. Show it that you mean business. And after a while, you get more and more used to staying here. At the same time, you try to make the breath comfortable. Each time you come back, reward yourself with the way of breathing that feels really good. Pose that question in the mind. Each time you breathe in, what kind of breathing would feel good this time? Deep, shallow, heavy, light, fast, slow? See how the body responds. And if it doesn't respond in much of any way, you can try experimenting yourself. This is where you get some control over the mind, which the Buddha said is one of the, the factors that leads to happiness. There are four altogether. There's a story that a, a yaksha challenged the Buddha one time. The Buddha had stayed in the yaksha shrine. And the yaksha tried to chase him out, and he said, get out. So the Buddha got out. He said, well, come back in. So the Buddha came back in. He did this three times. And the fourth time, and then the Buddha said, okay, I'm not leaving. In that case, the yaksha said, I'm going to ask you some questions. And if you can't answer them, I'm going to throw you across the river. So the Buddha wasn't phased at all. The yaksha asked his questions, and one of them was, how do people find happiness in life? And the Buddha listed four qualities. The first is being true. Once you see that something really is good, you stick with it. And you tell yourself the truth about what's good. You don't lie to yourself, trying to say that things that you like must be good. There's a lot of things in life that you like that are bad for you, and things you don't like that are actually good for you. So you want to be true and figure out what really is good for you. And then you truly stick with it. Now, sticking with it requires that you have some endurance. That's the second quality. And that you have some control over your mind. That's the third. And then there's discernment to see, to keep checking and making sure that what you're doing is really right, really is leading to happiness. Because after all, you're the one in charge of your life. We're born into this world, and as I would have found, there's nobody in charge of the world. There are all kinds of people doing their thing, all kinds of beings doing their thing. But there's no one intelligence behind everything, which means that you don't have to serve anybody else's purpose. So you can ask yourself, what kind of purpose would you like to serve? You can look at the Buddha's example. He said, finding a happiness that's blameless, finding a happiness that doesn't change. That's a good purpose. And he found that it was one that you can actually succeed at. So you might want to give that a try. Harmlessness begins by being virtuous, being generous. In other words, looking for happiness in ways that don't harm other people and actually give things to them. And then by developing goodwill, really desiring your own happiness, really desiring the happiness of others. So you can make sure that your happiness doesn't infringe on their well-being. When you do this, then you're using your discernment, realizing that everybody in life wants happiness. But the kind of happiness that most people find is something that changes on them. And in the meantime, they end up harming one another, which is why life can get so miserable. But if you want to have a life that's not miserable, a life that actually is truly happy deep down inside, you want to look for a happiness that one doesn't change and two doesn't harm anybody. So when you develop these qualities, truthfulness, endurance, self-control, and discernment, that's how you take responsibility for your happiness. The yaksha was pleased with the Buddha's answer. He was converted to being a follower of the Buddha. But if you really want to know if the answer is good, you've got to put the answer into practice. That's the Buddha's challenge with all of his teachings. He doesn't force anybody to believe, but he says everybody is suffering. So suffering is forcing them to have to make a choice one way or another. Do you want to continue suffering, or do you want to try to find the way out? Here he's offering you the way out. He's offering it for free. So take advantage of it while the teachings are still available. And then you can test for yourself how true you can be and how true those teachings are. 
That's what I could find in happiness. It's also true. 